Hi friends, it's your girl Duchess Charm and welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, welcome to my channel. If this is the first time seeing my face or knowing of my existence, please feel free to stick around and click that subscribe button. It is Monday, happy Monday and it is Crime and Conviction Day. If you do not know what that is, it is a series on my channel where I summarize the life, crime and conviction of Jamaicans who have committed crimes abroad or crimes committed in Jamaica. Now today, 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 we will be speaking about Jamaica's very first recorded serial killer. If this is not your cup of tea, that is fine. I have some other videos on my channel that you might find interesting. So you can just click off and go and check those out. So without further ado, let us jump right into it. This might be a short video shorter than my other videos because the case that we are talking about happened in the 1700s way back then and you know information travels and it gets lost and so on and so forth i was finding the same information over and over again while i was researching it but i will be sure to leave my sources linked down below in the description box if you guys would like to read up on this case for yourself there is a bit of hearsay in this episode but it's what I got so I have to work with it so Lewis Hutchinson also known as the mad doctor or the mad master was born in Scotland where he studied medicine strangely enough there are no records of Lewis Hutchinson in Scotland but there was a newspaper article that referred to him as James Hutchinson so it could be a simple case of him just changing his name. In the 1760s Lewis migrated to Jamaica and obtained an estate which he called Edinburgh Castle. This meant something to him because Edinburgh is the capital of Scotland. It is said that he obtained the land legally but the cattle he stole from his neighbors. On the plantation, he had about 24 slaves. Shortly after Lewis arrived to the island and got settled in Edinburgh Castle, many travelers started to disappear. For many miles, Edinburgh was the only populated location on the way to St. Anne's Bay, so many travelers would stop there to rest. Unfortunately for them, they would fall victim to Lewis's rifle. It is unsure when exactly Lewis started to kill or the torture that his victims had to endure before their untimely end. Killing was a sport. It was fun. He even described it as a thrill. He had no preference. It could be male, female, black, white, Indian, Chinese, it really didn't matter to Lewis. After shooting his victims, Lewis would then dismember them and force his slave to get rid of the body, either by one, tossing them into a sinkhole where the animals could get to them, or two, hiding them in a country. I googled how the country thing would have worked, and apparently there were hollow spaces in the trunk of countries where the slaves could put these bodies, and they would succumb to their environment. It is also said that he would feed on the flow of his victim's blood, but we will never truly know if Lewis was actually a cannibal or not. Lewis's slaves' tales of terrible treatment and the gruesome details of the murders made him legendary and practically gave him a rope record. There was an English doctor by the name of Jonathan Hutton who owned a plantation close by by the name of Bonneville. Lewis thought Jonathan had trespassed on his land and this angered Lewis. One evening Jonathan was riding home accompanied by one of his slaves carrying his saber. If you guys don't know what a saber is, it is a sword. I will insert a picture if you guys would like to see that visual. Lewis felt the need to take the saber from the slave and taunt Jonathan. However, Lewis was ignored and Lewis did not like this. A few days later, Jonathan was out riding with his daughter Mary who was eight at the time when they encountered Lewis who without provocation struck Jonathan with the saber. Fortunately, Jonathan did not die, but he was seriously injured. Jonathan was able to make his way to Kingston to seek treatment and to make a formal report to the authorities about Lewis. 
It seemed as if the authorities were not doing anything and Jonathan was seriously ill so he managed to make the long journey back to his home, England, to seek treatment. Jonathan returned back to Jamaica a year or so later where he sought to have Louis arrested. A soldier called John Calinder and some other men were sent to arrest Louis. When he saw what was happening, he fired a shot at Calinder, killing him. Louis escaped to Old Harbor and boarded a ship, but fortunately he was caught before he could escape. His castle was searched and about 43 watches were found, a large amount of various sized clothing and other items which further indicated that he indeed was doing something sinister in that castle. Louis Hutchinson was only tried for one crime which was the death of John Calendar. In 1773, Louis Hutchinson was hanged in Spanish Town Square. We will never know the true amount of persons that Louis killed, however over the years the claims were investigated but there was no evidence that was found. The Edinburgh Castle still stands to this very day, although it is ruins but it is on the list of National Heritage Sites and the sinkhole, remember the sinkhole, it is named Hutchinson's Hole. I find that very funny but you and your friends can pay it a visit after all this is over and another fun fact about this case I don't know if you guys play Assassin's Creed I don't but if you do it was featured in Assassin's Creed 3 on a level called the Mad Doctor's Castle I do apologize for this case being so short but it was back in the 1700s and this is all the information that I could gather but I did find it interesting so I wanted to share it. Nonetheless I have thoughts. I just think this man was straight up deranged. We do not know the amount of persons that he actually killed. Online it says that it is one which is John Calendar plus 43 because they counted the watches that were found but i believe that it is much more than that i don't think this man stopped at travelers i think he killed his slaves as well i think he just wanted to kill and the authorities allowed him to kill even though he wasn't private about what he was doing persons knew the slaves knew this man had a reputation his neighbors knew the only persons that apparently didn't know were the travelers that ended up being his victims this man had no filter he walked up to jonathan in the middle of the day in front of jonathan's eight-year-old daughter and he attacked him something like that i don't think a normal person would do the authorities really and truly dropped the ball on this one but then again it was ages ago so this white man from Scotland he had land he had cattle he had slaves he had power anyways guys that's all I have for you today thank you so much for watching if you liked it remember to like it and share it with your friends if you have any thoughts and opinions on this case I would love to hear it leave them right there in the comment section I will be linking my sources in the description box and as per usual remember to be a beautiful soul not just a gorgeous face have a wonderful rest of the week guys Mwah. bye on my channel where i speak about the live conviction girl get it together get it together